Have you ever wanted to create your own Arch Linux based distribution? That's what we're going to do today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Arch ISO program. Arch ISO, it's the program that builds the Arch Linux ISO. Arch Linux releases an ISO every month. And how do they build that ISO every month? Well, they run the Arch ISO program. The cool thing with Arch ISO, though, is you can customize the files that are within Arch ISO before you build it which means you can actually customize it. It doesn't have to be a vanilla Arch Linux ISO that you build. You can add some stuff to it. You can modify it a little bit to make it your own. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that we also add the Calamaris installer to the Arch ISO that we build. That way we could share the ISO with others if we wanted to. And it'll have a graphical installer, the Calamaris installer, that they could run through, you know, click OK three or four times and boom, you have your custom distribution on their machine. Now, before I proceed, I do want to warn you that these are deep topics that will require a lot of time invested if you really want to build your own distro using Arch ISO and the Calamaris installer because it takes a long time to kind of figure out how Arch ISO and how Calamaris work, the, those two programs. There's a steep learning curve to them. Now, I did a video uh, about three months ago. I did a video on build your own distro with Arch ISO. And that video is about a 35 minute long video. I spent a few days playing with Arch ISO before I made the video. And even then, you know, I was struggling with some of the things in Arch ISO. Again, it's kind of a deep topic. Now, there is a Arch ISO wiki page over on the Arch Linux wiki. I strongly suggest reading that. I also strongly suggest before watching this video, watch that first video on Arch ISO because I'm not really going to cover the basics with Arch ISO on this video. We're going to actually cover mostly configuring Calamares and getting Calamares to build on our Arch ISO. Now, probably what most Linux maintainers do is they have their own custom build of Calamares that they maintain. Obviously, I'm not a distro maintainer and I don't want to be a, a distro maintainer. I don't want to put out ISOs for the public and actually be anybody's support channel. And I also, I don't want to maintain a Calamaris installer that sees frequent updates, right? So I'm just going to maintain my own version of Calamaris, but it's strictly going to be the Calamaris from the AUR, right? Just the vanilla Calamaris installer that somebody is nice enough to maintain over on the AUR. I'm actually going to get this package build. So I'll go grab the package build. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this to the DTOS core repository, DTOS-core-repo, which is my own custom repository of software for DTOS. And then when we build the Arch ISO, I'm just going to make sure that I have Calamaris listed as a package that will install during the building of the Arch ISO. So I've covered maintaining my own repository of software on a video in the past. Matter of fact, this video right here, the AUR removed my packages, so I created my own repo. I did that video about three years ago where I first decided I was going to create my own repository of Arch Linux packages and maintain it myself, and that shortly became the DTOS core repository. So let me switch to this workspace here. I'm going to launch a graphical file manager, if I can type correctly. This is PCMan FM, and I have a repository here called DTOS-PackageBuild, and x86-64 is the architecture. If I go in there, there are all the packages and their package builds for DTOS. And one of the folders in here is Calamaris, and there is the Calamaris package build. Again, I just grabbed that straight from the package build over on the AUR. Then I also have these four extra files that are also needed when I build the Calamaris binary because the package build requires them. If I actually open this, let's open this with Emacs here. And I go down to this block here, which is source. I'll zoom in a little bit, make it full screen. You can see source. It's going to pull down the Calamaris source code from this GitHub repository, but it also expects these four files here to also be present. So that is why it's not just the package build that I have in this directory. I also have those other files as well. And then at that point to actually build the package, you know, I would just open a terminal and I would CD into the DTOS package build repository slash x86 underscore 64 slash calamaris. 
do a ls there's the package build all i would do at this point is i would do a make package and i will require my packages to be signed all the packages for the dtos repo are signed packages and then that will build the binary for me and then the binary will be in this folder here and i will move that to this repository I have called DTOS-Core-Repo and then go into x86 underscore 64 in this repo. And this is just all the binary packages that I build along with the accompanying signatures. So you can see there is the Calamaris binary that I've already built today. And there is the signature for the Calamaris package as well. Now I don't want to spend too much time talking about packaging for Arch Linux. I've done videos about this in the past, but other than uh, Calamares, I'm also, I created my own DTOS-Calamares-Settings package. And all this is, this is a package build that will pull down some config files that Calamares will read if they're present on your system. And it will pull this down from DTOS slash Etsy slash DTOS dash Calamaris dash settings. And there inside that folder, there is Etsy. So this will be Etsy on the eventual DTOS installation. And it will place uh, inside slash Etsy slash Calamaris. It will place all of this branding modules and settings.conf. And these are the actual config files that we're going to play with for Calamaris. So let me right click and I'll open this with NeoVim this time. This is the settings.conf. Now this file here, if I zoom in a little bit, all this does is it tells Calamaris which modules are going to be used when the installer runs because there are dozens of modules that could be included in a Calamaris installer. Not all the modules work on all Linux distributions. One of the things with the Calamaris installer that makes it so complicated is it's kind of built as a generic installer for all Linux distributions, but not all Linux distributions are the same. So it's very different using Calamaris on a Debian based distribution, for example, than it would be on an Arch based distribution. Uh, and there's also plugins and modules for building NixOS and Calamaris and things like that. But if I scroll down, we'll eventually get to this block here of sequence. And under sequence, we have show. And then if you've ever run through a Calamaris installer at all, I mean, what's the first thing in the Calamaris installer? It's a welcome screen, right? And then typically you pick your locale. And then after that, you typically tell it what uh, keyboard layout you want to use. And then you decide the partition, right? Do you want to erase the disk or install alongside another operating system? And then of course you create your username and their strong and complicated password. And then finally you get a summary that tells you everything that you've chosen in the previous sections. And then finally you click OK and the installation begins. And once the installation begins, that is the exec part here. And I have many of the modules commented out. I'm not using very many, but I am going to use the partition module where it partitions the drive mount, unpacking the file system, machine ID, FS tab. So that's your file system table. So it's going to set all of that up automatically for you, right? <laughs> then locale, keyboard, you know, I'm, I've got a lot of things here. Many of these are just the defaults for Calamaris, but a lot of these modules I have edited a little bit and I will show you exactly how I edited them. Uh, as far as branding, I have default. Now what this is, this is the name of a folder. So if I go back to the file manager, inside slash Etsy slash Calamaris slash branding, it expects a folder uh, the folder will have a name. Whatever the name is, that is the name you need to put here. I'm just using default, but I could rename it DTOS. If I rename the folder DTOS, then the branding needs to be DTOS so it knows which folder to look in. Other than that, we have some other variables to assign, mostly just setting stuff true or false. I believe I left all of these as defaults. But let's go back to the exec section and all of these modules. Where would you find this? Well, let me go up a directory because other than branding, we had modules. If I go into modules, there are all the modules that I have played with uh, as far as I needed to edit them in some way. Now, some of the modules in the exec section, you can see I actually don't have a config for. So if I don't have a config for it here, what it's going to do is just going to use the default uh, Calamaris files, uh, config files. But if I have my own 
it will use my own. And most of these module configs are pretty self-explanatory. Let's look at the users.conf file. So this is the user module where it'll create users. You can see the default groups. I'm going to be a member of a video network storage. Obviously the wheel group, we need sudo privileges. We need to be a member of the audio group as well. You can see the sudoers group is set to wheel. When I say Calamaris is kind of complicated because not all distributions are the same. Not all distributions have a wheel group. For some distributions, the sudoers group is actually a group called sudo, not wheel. So, but for arch-based distributions, it'll be wheel. And then if I scroll down, one other thing you want to do is allow weak passwords. I set that to true. That way I don't have to use a really long and complicated password. I hate that, especially when I'm testing things in VM. So I'm going to allow weak passwords. Also going to set the default user shell to slash bin slash fish. And then finally, host name, I'm going to set to DTOS dash CPU. So well, when you're running through the Calamaris installer and I create my user DT, and then it's going to ask about the host name of the computer. If I don't enter one by default, it'll just create that as DTOS dash your CPU, which is typically x86-64. And you can see forbidden names for host name. You can't name your host name localhost, so that's forbidden. So that was the users.conf. Uh, some of the other ones I've played around with, bootloader.conf. Let's open that and zoom in. And mainly, you need to edit this for branding purposes. So for me, bootloader entry name, I'm going to make sure that the entry name is DTOS because obviously by default when we're uh, doing the Arch ISO, you know, it'll name everything as Arch. And we got displaymanager.conf. I'm going to use SDDM as the display manager. You can see display managers here are some of the ones that are available. And let's take a look at the uh, mount.conf. And this is just going to be listing out some mount points. See extra mounts, extra mounts EFI, and then butterfs subvolumes. And then also have packages.conf. There's really only one thing you need to worry about here back in you know what package manager are you using on an arch based system obviously that needs to be pacman so let's close that out we have uh, remove user.conf so this is so it removes a user after the calamaris installer has finished and i want you to remove the user dtos because in the Arch ISO, I've already set up the Arch ISO to create a user called DTOS. So I'm telling Calamari, hey, when you run through an installation, delete the user DTOS. And, you know, it'll delete the DTOS home folder and all of that. And then I have a shellprocess.conf. I called it actually shellprocess-final.conf because it's uh, descriptive, because it's obvious what this does. It's after the DTOS installation, uh, after the Calamaris has finished unpacking everything and it's pretty much done, I want it to run these particular scripts. And I've got these scripts located in user local bin. The first script is remove after installation. This is a list of packages I want Calamaris to remove after it finishes the installation. And I, there's two things I want it to remove. I want it to remove the Calamaris installer itself because you never need to run through Calamaris a second time, right? It's very dangerous to leave the installer on a system. So remove Calamaris after the installation and also remove Gparted because I have Gparted on the ISO if you're running it as a live USB stick. But if you actually run through a proper installation, then after that, remove Gparted from the installation. Then I have a script here for configuring Emacs. This is just starting the Emacs daemon uh, two or three times and answering yes to a few questions so that my Emacs config is ready for use as soon as we're done with the installation. And finally, I have this script fix pacman keyring. What this will do, it's going to do a uh, pacman dash key dash dash init to initialize the keys. And then it's going to do a pacman dash key space dash dash populate. Arch Linux populate with the Arch Linux key ring. Basically, this should just make sure that Pac-Man works for us when we're done because sometimes there'll be issues with the key ring. So let's close that out. And most of these other modules I really didn't play too much with. And that's really all you have in uh, slash Etsy slash Calamaris. You have the settings.com, which lists all the modules and the order that they're going to be executed in. Then you have the modules themselves. And then you have branding, branding, default, and here is all of like the uh, slides that get displayed and any kind of artwork. 
So I have banner dot ping here. Let me open this and SXIV. So I created this simple little DTOS logo. And then I have about four slides here. And then you have a file called show.qml, which I could open here in NeoVim. And essentially, this is just the slideshow. And I have four different blocks here for slide for four different images. This is uh, one dot ping and this is two dot ping three dot ping and I may create more images but I created four pretty simple images in GIMP just to have a working slideshow during the installation and you have squid dot ping which I believe is the artwork that appears in the sidebar at the top of the sidebar where you go through welcome and partitioning and all of that so this is a just an image that will appear in that left hand sidebar typically and then the most important file here is branding.desc. So let's open that. And here you're going to assign various values to various variables. Uh, some of the most interesting ones, though, are strings and product name. My product name will be DTOS. Version number, I'm going to say my version number is 2023.7 because it's July 2023. I'm also going to give it a code name. I'm going to call it Arid Armpit. Since this is the very first DTOS ISO I'm building, right, we might as well go with the A. So Arid Armpit seemed like an appropriate code name. Then we have various URLs because there will be buttons that appear in the Calamari's installer. You'll typically have a support button, a donate button, an about button, release notes, things like that. And I have given URLs for all of that stuff. Then we have images. I left all the images as the default values. I commented out this one here wallpaper.ping. I'm not going to use it, but everything else, I'm just using the standard images or, or the names of the images, but I have replaced the images like squid.ping. It used to be like a squid, like an octopus. I actually branded that as a DTOS kind of logo. Banner.ping is another big DTOS logo. Uh, and then finally, you got style down here, which is assigning some color values to things like the sidebar background, uh, sidebar text, and text current, and also background current as well. So let me close that out. So let's actually build an Arch ISO. So in my home directory, I have a folder that I created called ISO. I could have named it anything. And in there, I have two subdirectories. I have DTOS 2304 and DTOS 2307. DTOS 2304 was the video I made three months ago on Arch ISO. That is the ISO that I built. DTOS 2307 are what we're about to build. So if I click on DTOS 2307, we have this folder, Relaying. Now Relaying, um, where you need to get that, if I go back to my browser here and go to the Arch ISO wiki, what you need to do is you need to copy recursively slash user slash share slash Arch ISO slash config slash Relaying over into whatever directory you are copying that over to. So I've already copied the Relang folder, and inside the Relang folder we have AI root file system, right? AI root FS. So if I go into this, you can think of this as the file system that will be built on the ISO as it's created. So you have the standard top level directories in here like slash Etsy, slash root, slash user, and then slash Etsy. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things that are here by default, but I went ahead and added a lot of things that weren't here. For example, I added a sddm.conf file because I'm going to use sddm as a login manager. I'm going to make sure sddm is installed when we build the ISO. Now, I've covered a lot of this stuff on the previous video on Arch ISO, so I won't cover that, but some interesting things you need to know about. You need to know about the scale directory, so this will be a user's home directory once they create a user using the Calamaris installer, for example, or they could create a user in the terminal, you know, after the Calamaris installer. Anytime you create a user on the system, where does it get the default configs 
for a Linux distribution? Well, typically slash Etsy slash skill is where they get that default bash RC that gets created or the de default fish config, ZSH uh, RC, whatever it happens to be. And I'm creating a lot of default configs because I'm going to have a default config for the Alacrity terminal and also for Xmonad and Xmobar and the Cute Browser, Qtile and Polybar. And I'm going to have a lot of config files in slash Etsy slash skill. So when I create my user, my DT user in Calamaris, all of this stuff automatically gets placed in my user's home directory that's created. Some other things in slash Etsy is slash Etsy slash default slash grub. So what this file is, if I open it and zoom in, really I just have this so I can set grub distributor to DTOS. So obviously that is distribution name I want to be displayed. Otherwise we're gonna get uh, Arch Linux displayed in the grub menu. I also created sddm.conf D, so this is the uh, sddm config directory and I have kde underscore settings dot conf so what this file does is you know if you're using sddm for a login manager it allows me to select the default theme for sddm so I'm going to install my custom uh, multicolor dash sddm theme a, a package of my own that I, I maintain so that will load our login manager theme slash etsy slash systemd if you go into this you may need to play with some systemd stuff you may need to go into slash etsy slash systemd slash system and you definitely want to have a sim link for display dash manager dot service what display manager um, do we want to load by default and of course we want to load sddm for our display manager you can see execute start is slash user slash bin slash sddm so that ensures that uh, SDDM automatically launches when we boot our computer. Now let me go back up into the AI root file system. So that was slash Etsy. There is some stuff in slash user. So I have slash user local bin, and these are various scripts that are needed for things like polybar, xmobar. Some of these scripts are also used uh, as part of the shell process module for the Calamaris installer. For example, after Calamaris finishes the installation, it's going to run this script here, remove after installation. And if I open this and show it to you, I'm just doing a sudo pacman dash r calamaris and gparted. Remove calamaris and remove gparted. And you can see I prepended it with the yes command. Just in case pacman asks, do I really want to remove it? I've already answered the question yes. So other than that, in slash user, I also have a slash user slash share pacman keyrings. And then I've created my own uh, dtos.gpg and dtos-trusted for the key ring. Now I've shown you some of this in the previous video three months ago on Arch ISO, but one last thing I want to cover before I actually build the ISO is once again I want to take a look at this here. So in the relang directory you should have a file called packages.x86 underscore 64. So these are all the packages that the Arch ISO will install when it builds the Arch ISO. So what I've done is here at the top, these are all of the packages that the Arch ISO uh, packages.x86 underscore 64 file had by default. So this is just a vanilla Arch ISO installation. So it's not going to install any graphical programs. It's not going to install uh, XORG or Wayland or anything like that, right? This is when you're done, all, all you've got is the TTY, right? That's a base Arch Linux install. And then I've got this new section of packages that I'm actually going to add to the ISO, including the Calamaris installer. Now I've already added the DTOS core repository to pacman.conf. So Calamaris will be available for installation through Pacman as well as all of these other things from the DTOS core repository, including my config files for uh, dmenu and alacrity, the awesome window manager, my fish config, bash config, and various other things. I'm going to use LX appearance to set GTK themes. Uh, LX session will be my uh, session manager. And then we have multicolor SDDM theme for SDDM, which is also here, shell color scripts. Of course, my shell color scripts that appear every time I you know, launch a terminal. 
and the three window managers that I'm going to install, a list of fonts I'm going to install, some important GUI applications just to make sure I have some basic stuff installed, including Emacs, MPV, uh, Pavu control, Pulse Audio volume control, Cute Browser will be the browser I install. There's three shells that I'm going to install, some themes, and then various uh, command line utilities mostly that I would like to have on the system, or in some cases they're actually required uh, dependencies for some other things I'm going to do. And then this lengthy section here for Xorg related things. So there's some XF86 drivers. There's various Xorg programs, including the most important one, the Xorg server itself. I also need XDo tool because it's required for some of what I do with XMobar. I also am going to install Arander, which is a GUI front end to Xrander. So that allows you to easily change your display resolution. So that is the packages x86 underscore 64. So let's actually install this thing. So let's build the ISO. So I'm going to zoom way in. I'm going to CD into that ISO directory. If I do an LS, let's CD into DTOS-2307. And if I do another LS, there is Relang. Now from the parent directory of the Relang directory, I'm going to run this command here. I'm going to do a sudo mk arch iso so sudo make arch iso i'm going to give it dash v's the dash v flag is for uh, verbose so we actually get output as it's building and then dash w so this is the working directory so it's going to create a working directory in my home directory slash iso slash dtos dash 2307 slash output so it's going to create this output directory in the same directory that relaying is in and finally, we need dash O, so this is the output. This is actually where it's going to actually place that, that ISO that it's going to build. I want you to place it in ISO DTOS 2307 output. So the working directory we created is also where I want you to place the ISO once it's finished. And then finally, we need to specify a directory for Arch ISO to actually use as far as, you know, the AI root file system and the config files and everything, and it's going to use the relaying directory that is in this directory. And assuming I've done all of this right, if I hit enter, it's gonna ask for a sudo password, of course. And it's going to install, it looks like 1,226 packages. So a base Arch Linux installation, if I just done the base Arch ISO without any of my extra packages, no Xorg, no window managers, nothing like that, it would have been probably, I don't know, three or 400 packages. I'm not sure what the base Arch install is these days. But because I installed uh, Xmonad, especially with all the Haskell libraries that it has to install, Qtile needs a lot of Python stuff. I also installed the Awesome Window Manager, which will pull down some Lua stuff. You know, I've got quite a number of packages that it's going to install. Typically, building this ISO is going to take, I don't know, probably five to ten minutes. I'm actually going to step away for a minute. I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee. And the Arch ISO finished building. You can see the fish shell told me it took eight minutes for that to actually finish building. So if I uh, do an LS, now I have a new directory that was created called output because I told it to create the output directory. If I CD into output and do an LS, I now have DTOS-23.07 uh, x86 underscore 64. So that is the uh, ISO. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a virtual machine and let's see if this ISO actually works. Let's see if Calamares actually launches and then let's run through an installation with the Calamares installer to see if it actually installs correctly. So I spun up a VM here in Vert Manager and we get our boot menu and I changed uh, the splash screen here from the Arch Linux logo which would typically be here to DTOS right I created this in GIMP in just a couple of minutes and then DTOS install medium so I've removed all the Arch branding except for the top of the menu here says Arch Linux. So I need to go back and correct that. It was very tricky to actually remove all of the Arch Linux branding from the various files in the Arch ISO. Um, there's so much, there's so many mentions of Arch Linux. It's kind of hard to, to go in and change all of the branding. And it boots up, welcome to DTOS. And then we get all the system D start jobs that are running. And then eventually it should get to the systemd start job for launching SDDM for our display manager. Yep, started SDDM. And let's see if it launches with the correct theme that I specified. 
yeah and there it is so let me hide my head so you guys can see that that is a, a theme I created for SDDM now let me change the window manager from Qtile Wayland to Xmonad for one thing I didn't install any Wayland related stuff so I doubt Qtile Wayland would even work so let's go ahead and log in now on the Arch ISO I specified the Arch ISO to create a live user called DTOS and then slash etsy slash passwd I specified that the DTOS user his password is also DTOS so that is the login credentials if you need them and xmonad is loading uh, polybar is loading as well or is that xmobar I think by default it's using xmobar and let's go ahead and launch a terminal and let's fix the screen resolution so uh, Calamaris auto started as well. So let's do a X render space dash S 1920 by 1080. Fix the screen resolution. For whatever reason, this sidebar navigation is just black. It's a black uh, background, black text. Uh, you, you can't read anything. If you hover over it, it gives you some information. Uh, that's welcome, that's location, keyboard, partitions, users, you know, all the steps that the Calamaris installer is going to go through. But I'm not sure why that is the way it is. I actually used several different uh, Calamaris uh, configurations out there on the internet because so many Linux distributions have their Calamaris modules and configuration files on GitLab and GitHub and all of them that I tried I would always get this black rectangle. I don't know if it's maybe a missing dependency. If anybody has any idea why that is the case help me out on that and I'll go ahead and push this Arch ISO build to my GitLab later. That way you guys can actually run through the same uh, building at the ISO and then if you wanted to you can try it out in a VM yourself. But let's go ahead and see if the installer actually works. So I'm going to hide my head here. I hate the default uh, <laughs> picture here for the languages. This was just a image that comes with Calamaris out of the box but that is really uh, just a horrible picture. So <laughs> I probably should swap that out for something else or create my own uh, kind of language banner but uh, by default American English is chosen I'm gonna click next and then geolocation is working because it is correctly chosen the central time zone in the US for me so I'm just gonna click next uh, keyboard is English so that's good I'm just gonna click next and then finally uh, partitioning we have erase disk or manual partitioning if I do erase disk I'll just give the entire drive of this virtual machine over to DTOS we'll create a swap file as far as file systems I have several to choose from and I specified this in the uh, Calamaris config but by default we're gonna go with extend 4 and then I'm gonna go ahead and click next let's go ahead and create our user I'm gonna call my user DT as always and let's create a strong and complicated password for the DT user repeat the strong and complicated password and then click next and then we get our summary location keyboard partitions yeah all of this looks good so I'm just gonna click the install button and away it goes and we should get our slideshow because I created four slideshow images just to have something going on during the installation so the slideshow is definitely working yeah kinda cool Obviously, some of my slides, you know, for DTOS, I got to mention uh, Emacs and I got to mention wallpapers. I always talk about wallpapers every time I install a Linux distribution. Obviously, if I create my own distribution, it's all about the wallpapers. Yeah, and then it's going to cycle back through the uh, slides again. So I'm going to pause the video. This will probably take about five or ten minutes to finish the installation. I'll be back once the installation has completed. And the installation has completed, although I did get an error here at the very end of the Calamaris installer when it was running one of those shell processes that I specified. The shell process was a uh, fix Pac-Man key ring. So this was going to run through a, a Pac-Man key init and a Pac-Man key populate. And for whatever reason, it did not do this correctly. So let's open a terminal. So I'm going to cd into slash user local bin ls and this was the script that it tried to run there at the end of the Calamaris installer and for whatever reason it could not run it. I try to run it myself. Yeah, watch this thing actually work without an issue when I just run it myself. But for whatever reason when it ran part of the Calamaris installer it got an error somewhere. But it actually completed without it. I have no idea 
<laughs> so why why that worked <laughs> when I ran it from the terminal, but when it executed here as part of the uh, Calamari's installer, I'm going to leave this in. So uh, if you guys, I'm going to push all of this to my GitLab later. For whatever reason, when you run through the Calamari's installer and it gets to this, if it uh, you get installation failed, that's not the case. The installation completed because this was the very last part of the installation. And uh, so you'll be fine with that. Just run the, uh, the script manually to fix the Pac-Man rings. So let's go ahead and I'm going to reboot the virtual machine just to verify that this worked. Let me go into the VM settings first and make sure that it's going to uh, boot in the correct order. Yeah, it's going to boot off the disk, so it's already de detached the ISO. So let's see what our freshly installed DTOS looks like. DTOS Linux, right there in the grub menu. So that worked. And we get to our login manager, and now my username is DT because that's the user I created, right? And then let's give the super secure password. Let's also switch from Qtile Whalen, which will not work, over to Xmonad. And Xmonad launches fine. Xmobar and Conky. Let me fix the screen resolution here. So once again, I'll do an Xrander. Dash S 1920 by 1080. And let's fix the uh, wallpaper as well. I'm going to do a quick restart of Xmonad to get Conky in the right place. And then let me do super PB set a background, set a wallpaper, and I'll just pick one of these, and then I'll hit M on the keyboard to mark it, Super Shift C to close that, and yeah, so this is the VM of our freshly installed DTOS, and it installed with the Calamaris installer, although it did have that error. I'll have to investigate that error, but what I'll do, let me get out of this what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put all of this on my GitLab. If you go to my GitLab at gitlab.com slash DWT1, that's my GitLab page, DWT1, and go to Groups. And under Groups, I have a group called DTOS. This is all the DTOS-related repos. And I just created DTOS-ISO. And there is exactly the files, DTOS dash 2307 slash relaying. So this is everything you guys need to build an ISO, the exact same ISO I just did. All you need to do is do a git clone of this repo. And then after you git clone the repo, CD into the repo and just run this command that I showed you on camera a minute ago, the make arch ISO command. And you will build an ISO, the exact same ISO that I just built. And then, of course, you can then install it in a VM again, just like I just did on camera. So there you go. How you can create your own customized Arch-based distribution using the Arch ISO program and the Calamaris installer. Again, not everything was working quite as expected, but I spent about three full days trying to prepare for this particular video. I, I really spent the last three days working on getting Calamaris to work just correctly for me and building a lot of packages for my repo to get ready for today's video. And the Arch ISO video I did about three months ago also took me a few days to actually make that video because again these are kind of deep topics I, I had to learn a lot just to get to this point now am I gonna go forward with this I doubt it I'm not gonna put the ISO that I created out for public consumption I'm not gonna go create an account over at SourceForge and start putting ISOs over on SourceForge of DTOS for you guys to download no 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 the purpose of this video is for educational purposes as far as how to make your own ISOs so if you want the DTOS ISO I'm not putting it on SourceForge what I want you to do I want you to go to my GitLab git clone that repository and with the make arch ISO command I want you to build the ISO yourself and of course building the ISO yourself you can obviously customize it that way you can you know add packages remove packages from the build before you actually make the iso if you want to you can use what i've done here in this repository as a basis for you to eventually start your own linux distribution if that's the route you want to go now before i go i need to thank a few special people i need to thank the producers of this episode gabe james matt paul royal west armor dragon commander angry george lee methos nate or jan paul peace arch and Vador, realities for less red prophet roland tools devler war gentoo and ubuntu and willie these guys they're my highest tiered patrons over on patreon without these guys this episode about arch iso and the calamaris installer it would not have been possible the show is also brought to you by each and every one of these 
these fine ladies and gentlemen all these names you're seeing on the screen right now these are all my supporters over on patreon without these guys i couldn't do what i do i don't have any corporate sponsors i depend on you guys if you like my work subscribe to distrotube over on patreon all right guys peace